Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about working as a photo assistant. So I'm Daniel Norton, I'm a photographer here in New York. I make videos like this about the business of photography, about gear, about technique, about philosophy. If that kind of stuff interests you, go ahead and subscribe. So this comes from, I mean, people ask me this a lot actually, but the last time that I got asked that I actually saved the name was uh, somebody named Paul sent me a message. They said, you know, how, how do you get started as a photo assistant? How do you get jobs as a photo assistant? Um, and this is super interesting. Now, I will preface this by saying that it's been a long time since I was a photo assistant, so things have changed a bit, but the concepts are still the same, and uh, obviously I hire photo assistants, so I will let you know what, what my thoughts here. So there's all kinds of different photo assistants. So I'm going to mostly focus on commercial photo assisting um, because I think that uh, that's more what people are asking and more where the more of the work is. Um, but the very first photo assisting job I ever had actually was for a wedding photographer. Um, and the way I got that was actually a weird uh, thing. So I'll just say I was in school, basically, and the wedding photographer went and said, I'm looking for an assistant and asked all the, the, the teachers to ask any students. And we all kind of, anybody who was interested, interviewed with them. And, and I got the gig. Um, and it was amazing. I had no interest in doing weddings ever. I think I've already said this before. But, uh, man, I, I gained a lot of respect for wedding photographers. He was so good. Um, there's a lot going on when you're shooting a wedding, man. In any case... Uh, we're going to focus more on commercial stuff. But, you know, some of the still uh, plays into it depending on what kind of work you want to get. So there's a few different ways, um, and I'm going to kind of be broad-reaching here because obviously your market is going to depend. So when you're seeking any kind of work, right, what you need to do is think about who's hiring you, right? Same thing I always say about the photographers. Who's hiring photo assistants? And then... How do I reach those people? That's basically your, your questions you're going to ask, and which is, I guess, what you're asking me. Um, number one, uh, if you're going commercial stuff, people that shoot for uh, magazines oftentimes use assistants, you know, editorial photographers, and anybody who shoots commercial stuff, catalogs, uh, you know, advertising, all those people use uh, assistants. Also, people like wedding photographers use assistants. I think that when you go into more just strict kind of portrait photography, like people who shoot like senior portraits and stuff like that and sports photography, they may or may not, and it really depends on them. It depends on the size of their company. And oftentimes I think if they do have an assistant, it's generally like an office manager type position, which is another kind of type of assistant. Um, so, you know, kind of a somebody who helps in the office and then also, you know, books the appointments and stuff and then also helps on the set. Um, so those exist, you know... Um, as far as those are concerned, I think those kind of jobs in general, in my experience, um, much like the assistant job I got for the wedding photographer, uh, tend to be just like regular jobs. Somebody's looking for somebody, they put a posting somewhere and you reply to it, you know. Um, but you can use these same techniques to get those as well. And the first thing is you need to locate the photographers you want to work for. Um, photo assisting is different now than it used to be, and it, it actually changed right around the time that I think like my generation of assistants was part of the big change. It used to be that like uh, you know you would work like full time as an assistant. That's like was like the would, your goal would be. Now I think there's less and less full time, meaning working for one photographer assistants. Most assistants are freelance assistants that come in per job, and even when you need to do some of the bigger tasks like studio organization and stuff like that, you just get paid by the day. You know you make a deal and you get paid like that. It's not like you're on staff anymore. Um, so the, probably, I mean, the way that I did it, I will tell you exactly how I got my first gig, and then you can go from this. So I had moved um, to Miami with no connections and no nothing and just thought I could be a photographer and, yeah, to be young, you know. And uh, I realized immediately I would need to work. And I had read this book called The Photo Assistant, um, which I think I've mentioned before, and I think it is still available, but it is very old, so I, I don't think it's really super you know, uh, relevant maybe anymore unless you just are interested. Um, I'll see if I can find it again and put a link in the bottom. So anyways, uh, the, I, I'm like, well, how do I know who's around? Like, how do I know where the photographers that I can work for? And the very first thing I thought of was the phone book, right? Uh, the internet was not what it is today. Um, so, uh, I literally picked up the phone book and I started flipping through and I looked for photographers that looked like they might hire an assistant. In other words, I looked and I saw, you know, Bob's Portrait Studios, Senior Portraits every Saturday, and I saw, you know, wedding photographer, blah, blah. I didn't reach out to those people. But then I saw, like, literally the my, the small ads that said, like, 
And I actually remember the first person I ever worked for was a gentleman named Louis J. It said, Louis J., uh, I think it said advertising photography, and it had a, a, a phone number. So I called him. I was like, hey, <laughs> I'm new in town. I'm looking for work as a photo assistant. And as it turns out, he literally needed somebody the next day. Um, and he was like, oh, great. I was literally just about to call somebody, you know, and, you know I'm willing to try somebody new. Uh, can you use a 4x5 camera? Because that's what's going to happen, right? They're going to ask you, like, what you can use. Like, what gear you know now it's going to be. Do you know Capture One? Do you know Lightroom? Do you know Photoshop? Do you know Canon? Do you know Nikon? Whatever, you know, they're going to ask you whatever the, the, is the, they, the equipment they use. Um, back then, it was almost always lighting stuff because everybody knew every camera. I think now maybe cameras are more complex, so maybe that's an issue. Uh, certainly medium format cameras. So anyways, uh, I got the job and blah, blah, and I met a bunch of people, and that's kind of how I went through. Well, I, you know, once I get started, it's basically word of mouth. The next thing I did was I made postcards. So I, I had the list, right? So I literally called. So unlike Louis J, who hired me right away, most of the people that I called, I literally just called them on the phone, um, you know, said to me, send a promo. So I realized, oh, I need to make a promo. So I, I designed something, you know, I mean, I went to school for design. Um, you know, I'm a photo assistant, blah, blah. These are skills I have. And I, I looked at the things, you know, this was actually from that book, they talk about like, you think about the things that you, you possess um, that make you, that might make you a good assistant, even if you don't have a lot of skills, right? So you might uh, not know every piece of software or everything, but you might be, you know, uh, very attentive or willing to work hard, you know, just you make yourself a little promo and uh, you send them out. And I sent, I think about a hundred of them anyways, um, which slowly but surely started to get me work. And because of that, I ended up working for a lot of different types of people. Um, because I didn't target, which I'm going to talk about in a second, uh, who I sent them to. I worked for food photographers. I worked for architectural photographers. I worked for product photographers. I worked for advertising photographers, corporate photographers. I even worked for a wedding photographer at one point. And I worked for, uh, of course, fashion photographers, which was my goal. Now, my friend Eric, who came up at the same time as me, that's an awesome photographer, he also uh, did promos. But Eric was smart. He set targeted promos. He spent the time and effort to research the photographers in the area, and he made a much more elaborate promo that really, really stuck out. Uh, it was like this box and everything. It was super cool. I wonder if he even has any anymore. It'd be cool to, to, to I'll have to reach out to him. It was awesome. Way better than anything I did. Um, and, you know, it stood out, and, and, he, and he ended up working for people that he wanted to work for right away, which is very smart. Um, so the, so there's kind of two ways, right? You've got your, your overall way and then you get your targeted way. I think in a bigger market, like one that there's a lot of photographers, the targeted way works well. Um, if you're in a smaller area where there's not a lot of commercial photographers, then you might just have to apply, you know, or send promos to everybody that's around because, you know, it's a numbers game in the end, right? You, even though you want to work for X photographer, they might already have three assistants they use regularly. So you've got to kind of get them at the right moment. So what you're going to do is you're going to make some kind of promo. It's probably not going to be... Now, again, I'll roll back and talk about times, right? When when I was assisting... So, sorry to assisting anyways. You didn't send unsolicited emails to people. <laughs> it was actually considered a very much a no-no. Like, you didn't just randomly send somebody an email. Um, it, it was just a different world, right? So you didn't send DMs and stuff like we do today. So we sent mail-in promos. That's probably not something that you are going to do. If you do that, it will certainly stand out. I mean, I know that if I got a mailer promo in, in, at my studio, I'd be like, whoa, what's going on here? This is somebody really wants to work with me. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary anymore. I feel like that most people have a way to contact them. And you can certainly reach out on their website. You can uh, do uh, you know, their Instagram or whatever, their, the email, whatever, wherever they have for a mode of contact. And what I would recommend that you do is look at... The work that, you, especially when we're talking targeted now, even if it's not really, every, you should be somewhat targeted no matter what because you can customize every email, right? Look at their work, see what they do, pick a couple things that you like about it, a couple things about you that you think would work really well. Oh, I see that you work a lot with food. You know, my uncle was a chef and I have some experience, you know, with hand, food handling, whatever, you know. Basically, what you want to do is show them why you would be a good candidate to work for them. You know, besides what equipment you can use or whatever. You know, think of photo assisting like any other job, right? You've got your qualifications that are maybe strictly like, oh, I can use an icon or a Canon. And then you've got your qualifications that are like, I show up on time. I have, you know, a history. I've worked with these people. So, you know, you want to think like that. 
and I would reach out. And you want to do it in a fairly regular fashion. Um, monthly, maybe. Um, it really kind of depends. It, also on the reaction that they give, clearly. Um, you will probably will just be ignored, which is what I do to 99% of the people that reach out to me. If I, don't, if I don't need them right then, I put them in a file. Like, I literally have a file for photo systems. I move them in there and, you know. I mean, sometimes I'll reply back and be like, thanks for saying that we, if I have time. But usually I'm getting them and I'm just like, oh, okay, I just put it in the file. Which is what people always did, right? I used to have a wall in my studio where it was like a corkboard and photo assistants would send their promos and I would just stick them on the wall, you know, until it's time to hire them. Then you reach out. So really the key here in the beginning is to establish who you want to work for. So just like anything, finding the person that, that potentially hires photo assistants. So think about that. Think about who you want to work for, what kind of work you want to do. And reach out to them, you know, uh, simple, clean, professional, you know, an email. Uh, I wouldn't, I probably would be less likely to call people today because I feel like that's a little bit different. It's funny how times change. A phone call made more sense before. I feel like most people don't want to be bothered with a phone call. Um, they'd much rather you send them an email, uh, which is exactly the opposite of when I started. Um, and make sure that when you send that, that you have some information about yourself. You know, uh, things that you want to say are a little, again, a little bit about yourself and your experience. What kinds of equipment that you that you've used? You know, almost like a resume, but not too much. You know, not so long. And that's it. You know, I mean, that's literally all you do, and you just repeat that process until you get in front of the people that want to hire you. You can be super lucky. Like I was super lucky and got that job because I called Louis J. Exactly, when I need somebody. I did work for him multiple times in the future, but like maybe like five more times that year. You know, so. And they weren't like all right away, like because commercial photographers don't work all the time. You know, they they a lot of it's production. When they say work, I mean they don't you know on set with a new assistant. There's a lot more to it than that, right? You might only do X number of jobs a year. So when you're when you're um, when you're looking, especially as a photo assistant, you're going to want to to have multiple photographers to hire you, so that you can stay busy, right? And also a big part of it once you get going is word of mouth. I would say after the first set of promos I sent. I think I did one more set, like, I don't know, six months to a year after the first one. And after that, I never sent another promo because I got established. Because photography is a community and people will know. Um, now, a couple other things, though, beyond that. That's just reaching out to people directly, you know. The other way to do it is to put yourself in places where, they, where people hiring assistants will go. So when I was starting, a big place for that would be a photo lab, you know, film processing. I mean, you still could do that because you'll find some cool photographers, I'm sure. Um, but rental houses are big. Commercial photographers are always renting equipment. Many, many rental houses either have a list of assistants, so you got to get on their list, which is a little trickier because obviously they have to trust you. Um, or they have a wall, you know, some kind of corkboard where you can put a promo on that wall. You want to put yourself in places where the photographers that need assistance will be looking. So, again, uh, uh, photo, photo labs maybe rental equipment for sure. Some camera stores have have walls of assistance. The other thing you can do is make sure you join some organizations like uh, ASMP, uh, PPA. Go to the meetings, right, as a photo assistant. Don't go to the meetings as, as a photographer if you're looking to assist. You know, go there as, I'm trying to gain experience. Well, of course, I take pictures, but I'm looking for work as a photo assistant. Because if that's what you're looking for, that's what you got to go and, uh, and get. So putting yourself in front of the people, being professional, doing a great job when you get the job and you will be busy. I mean, good photo assistants work all the time. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's a little challenging to break in is because there's, there are a lot of good ones and they, photographers want to work with somebody that they've worked with before that has done a great job for them. So when the opportunity opens up for you to, to take, uh, to take the job, they, 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 go, Oh yeah, I do need somebody. Make sure you kill it. And you will work as a photo assistant. And from there, you'll learn way more than you could ever learn just out there shooting on your own. Seeing other other photographers work, being on actual real jobs is invaluable. So let me know, did, how many of you guys started out as photo, assist photo assistants? How many of you guys want to be a photo assistant and haven't really uh, been able to break in? You know, are you in small towns? Are you in big cities? Like, give me your story about photo assisting. I'm really interested in that. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell so you get the notifications. And I'll see you next time.